What's up, New Hope, on this Labor Day weekend? I hope and pray you're doing well today. And I'm thankful that you are either in the house of the Lord or you are with us online. While you are doing that, I am in my hometown of Sumter, South Carolina, in my home church, and uh, just really having a good time with my family and friends and praying for you as you worship today. And I wanted to give you a little heads up. A week from today, on Sunday, September 12th, we are going to be revealing something really big. You've probably seen the question marks all over the place and with the caption, can you keep a secret? So can we. And uh, the day is coming when we are going to reveal something that is far reaching and really, really exciting in the life of this church. Again, that is a week from today, Sunday, September 12th. We're also going to be kicking off a brand new series that's titled Hope, changes everything and I'm very very excited and I will be back with you next weekend today we are going to continue in our series Ecclesia part three and uh, Keith Barreto who is our Hillsboro campus pastor has been praying and planning and preparing and he is going to come with a fresh word for you today as we wrap up this series so New Hope you know how we do it give him some welcome and some love as he comes to bring the word today here we go Hey, what's up, New Hope? What's up, everybody? Man, it has been a minute, but I am so glad to be here with you guys. Hey, uh, shout out to all of the campuses. Everybody tuned in today. Can you help us welcome them? And if I could just take a moment and give a special shout out to our Hillsborough campus. What's up, Hillsboro? You know, I have the honor of serving as campus pastor there, and I told them I was leaving town, but I never said where I was going. And so <laughs> I just told them it was for a good cause, and so here we are. But um, hey, are you guys ready for the word today? Yes. Hey, so um, years ago at a former church, we hosted a Biggest Loser contest between all of our campuses. You guys remember that TV show, Biggest Loser, where contestants would compete for 12 weeks to see who could lose the most weight? Well, I had six contestants, I call them athletes, who I trained, and long story short, my guy won. And the secret sauce to him losing weight was intervals, what we call intervals, burning and building. Burning and building. And um, yeah, so I wanted to bring that to you guys today. We are in this incredible series called The Ecclesia. And uh, by the way, Pastor has done an exceptional job for these past two messages, hasn't he? And I'm just honored to be able to teach the third and final installment to the body of Christ. And the title of the message today is, are you ready for this one? Bodybuilders. Bodybuilders. Let me just start by asking a question. How many of you guys have ever tried to get in shape? All right, you guys aren't in the room, but there is a holy hush across the whole room right now. All right, so what we did is we gave all of our contestants a heart monitor because we were gonna drive their heart rate up as high as we could possibly get it and still be safe, and then we knew that at that moment they were burning calories. Once they were done burning calories, then we would put them on the weights. And so we were going to burn and we were going to build. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever tried to get on one of these things before? It's hard work, isn't it? My father-in-law hated the treadmill. He said it was the most expensive coat hanger he ever spent money on. <laughs> Probably because they got him with those three easy payments. You know how they can get you with those three easy and if you order this week, we'll throw in a yoga mat for free. Probably got them on, no, they didn't get them on a yoga mat. There's no way. But man, I have the hardest time on these things. I'm good for like a quarter mile. After a quarter mile, it gets real, doesn't it? One time I was on the gym, in, 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 on one of these things in the gym, and I got a cramp, and I tried to work through it. Oh my goodness, it was the worst pain I had ever felt like. <laughs> I was sweating. By the time I hit three quarters of a mile, man, I was before the Lord quoting scriptures. You know, I was in prayer. I'm like, Lord, I thank you, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through. Like, have you ever had to use the restroom in an emergency? Like, it just hit me real hard, right, like right there in the side. But that's exactly how it was for our contestants. When they first started out, 
Like they could barely even get a half mile on there, but it was so awesome to see them make progress that within just a few weeks time, they were able to actually complete one mile on the treadmill. Man, to see those smiling faces, to say what it was like for, as a trainer, what that did for me, it was life changing. You know, I thought I was going to bless them, but before it was all said and done, I mean, man, they blessed me. And, and so what we would do, once we got them to burn calories, then we would put them on the weights to build muscle so that we could physically get them in the very best shape of their lives. So here's my prayer. My prayer today is that what I have to say to you would help you spiritually get into the best shape of your life so that you could be a blessing to the Lord and to the ecclesia, to the body of Christ. Amen? And so I want to help you get there. And I already told you that my guy won the Biggest Loser contest. Let me tell you what set him apart. There was a hunger down on the inside of him to grow and to get better, right? He used to come to me like when everybody was all said and done working out and they were high-fiving each other because, you know, they completed a mile. My guy would walk up to me and he'd be like, hey, coach, do you think you can text me that workout? And I'd be like, yeah, Mike, like, why? Why? What's up? He's like, because I'm about to go hit it again. Right, he was hungry to win. He knew he gave it 100, but he knew that everybody else gave it 100 as well. And so he had that winning spirit within him. He had that Jesus mentality. Jesus said, if somebody wants to go with you one mile, outwork them. Go ahead and go two miles, right? He had that winning spirit on the inside of him. I, I call it the Mamba spirit. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys know who Kobe Bryant is, you know that. He, he said he would win at all costs. And so last week, Pastor talked about run to win. And I wanna kinda of pick up where he left off. If we wanna be all that we can be and grow in the Lord, we, wanna, we need to be hungry to grow and to win, amen? So I've got two points for you today. Burn and build. And the workout plan that we're gonna be using is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12, verses 12 through 14. Hey, you guys ready for this? All right, so let's read nice and loud together across all of our campuses. Here we are. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Can you say amen? amen? So the Apostle Paul is speaking of unity and diversity. He's saying that our diversity is represented in us all individual believers coming into the body of Christ. But our unity is represented when we receive Christ we all become a member of the body. And so we gather together from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds and cultures and ethnicities, like one big, huge church picnic. <laughs> you guys remember those church picnics? Man, I pray that those church picnics come back. I miss those things. I declare the church picnic is coming back in Jesus' name. <laughs> Because at the church picnic, you could really see who people were based on the kind of food that they brought, right? Especially at A New Hope, we have all kinds of varieties. Now, this was the first place where I had ever in my life had slap your mama mac and cheese, <laughs> right? I was like, to, said to a world changer, like, why do you guys call it that? She said, Cece said, because it's so good, it'll make you wanna slap your mama. <laughs> We don't have that in New York, okay? <laughs> this is the first place that I have ever had shrimp and grits and world-class barbecue and homemade baked macaroni and cheese. And man, the church picnics are coming back. <laughs> uh, I better stop because I'm making us hungry. But that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying the church, the ecclesia, that we, we are a diverse people and we're coming from all different walks of life 
different countries and, and, and different places. And that's the beauty of the church, that we come rich, poor, broke, bougie. We, we work it all out and we make it all happen because everybody is welcome in the church of the living God. In fact, let me take it up a notch. We're not just welcome in the church. We need you in the church. Which leads me to my first point. Number one, burn it. Write that down. Type that in the chat if you're online. We need to burn up the lie that our presence isn't really needed in the church. Some of you guys may have heard my story before. I've shared a little bit in different times that I've spoken here on this stage. And uh, there was a span of time for about 10 years when I was not walking with the Lord. And one of the things, the lies that the devil would use in order to keep me discouraged was from coming to church was that I wasn't good enough to come to church. Like I would hear things like, oh, you just did that on Saturday night and now you're gonna try to go to church on Sunday morning? And I don't know if you've ever had the devil try to discourage you in your life before. Maybe I'm by myself. <laughs> but there's a saying in the old school church that I feel is relevant for today and that is, the devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the devil is a lie because you are welcome in the church, you are valued in the church, and you are more than definitely needed in the church of the living God. Now, Paul was speaking to the Corinthian church. Now, you have to understand, <laughs> the Corinthian church was kind of like the frat house of the church. Like, this was the, like, the most worldly, the, the, the most carnal, and so there was this strong sense of individualism and, and selfism and consumerism and all these other isms that would say, hey, if I feel like doing it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And if I don't wanna do it, then I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, and so Paul was saying, hey, listen, when we received Christ, we became of an unstoppable movement called the church that is global and ageless, and it is the ecclesia, and together we can win. There's no I in team, but there's an I and win, and we need you in the church, and if you are in this place, we can be that body that the Lord is speaking of in the scriptures. All right, so... One of the things that impressed me the most about these contestants in this Biggest Loser contest was this, this natural sense of team. Like even though they were competing against one another, they still had this natural sense of team because they realized that in order to reach their goals of getting healthy, they needed one another for encouragement and for support. And so one time in particular, there's this brother named Paul, and he was in there, and he was working out, and everybody was kind of doing their thing around the gym, and Paul got up under these weights without a spotter. And so he must have been a couple of reps in because all of a sudden, I hear, I can! And I was like, uh-oh. And, and like clockwork, everybody dropped what they were doing. And they rallied around this brother, around the bench, and they just started encouraging this guy. They're like, come on, Paul, you got this. Come on, you can do it. He's like, I can't. They said, no, you got it, you can do it. Come on, give it everything you got. Push it, push it, push it. And then he came up out of that thing, got the weight up off his chest, <laughs> and then he jumps up and he's like, rah! <laughs> Ah, oh, it was in that moment that I thought, man, that's exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about. He's saying, man, let's come together. We're one mind, one accord. We're stronger together than we are apart. And if we could just get you here to encourage and be part of that body, we can win this thing. Hey, the church should be the place where even if you had a bad day, or a bad week, or a bad month. The church should be the place where you find encouragement from your brothers and sisters in Christ, and though you went through a hard time, you've got a pep in your step, you're holding your head high, because the Holy Spirit has recharged your batteries, and you are ready for the week. Somebody shout, build it. That's my second point, build it. We need to 
build up each other in the Lord. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, verses 25 through 27. Is this okay? Anybody feel encouraged yet? Amen. So let's read this. We don't have to read together. I'll read it in your hearing. So that there should be no division in the body. Hey, if you're taking notes, underline division. Or if you have a cell phone, screenshot that thing, edit it, circle it, save it to the camera roll. Uh, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Now, underline that equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, watch this, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Man, that's a powerful passage of scripture right there. The whole concept of this text is that Paul is saying we are one body with many diverse parts and Christ being the head. And so Paul is saying that every single individual believer is valuable in the body of Christ. In fact, I'll even raise you another. He's saying that every single individual believer is crucial to the body of Christ. You know, one of the interpretations of scripture that I feel that's been overlooked by theologians when speaking of diversity is the overemphasis of commentary on the diversity of gifts and the lack of commentary for the diversity of ethnicity in the body of Christ, which is the heart of God, as referenced in Revelation 7 and 9, where John the Revelator says that he, he gives us a glimpse of heaven, and he says, I saw standing before the Lord a people that nobody could count from all different tribes and tongues and nations and creeds, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. That's the heart of God. Yet, here's a sobering quote. ABC News, 10 years ago, posted this, and they said, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, 11 a.m. Sunday is the most segregated hour in America. Now, 40 years after King's murder, only 7% of America's churches are considered racially mixed. Now, that was 10 years ago, and the church has made some progress. But in his book, What Color Is Your God?, Dr. David Ireland writes this. He writes how when God was building the early church in Antioch in the book of Acts 13, he draws out the ethnic diversity of this highly gifted, cross-cultural leadership team to serve as a blueprint and a model on how to build churches throughout the ages. So Acts 13 and verse one says this. Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon called Niger, Lucius of Siren, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Now, watch this. Simon called Niger was an African. Niger literally means the black. Lucius was a Greek, Menaean was a Jew, both Paul and Barnabas were bicultural men from bicultural cities. God brought these men from all different walks of life to be on a leadership team. If this were the NBA draft, this would be the ultimate dream team right here. I'm just trying to figure out who would be LeBron. Or is it Jordan? Who's the GOAT? Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh hey, let me step back. All right, I, let me get out of that. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out because this is a stacked team that God used as a model to represent the kingdom of heaven to multi-ethnic communities. Now, how is it that we have been able to build such large monoracial churches in America that lack diversity when we're all reading the same Bible and we're all serving the same God. Can I just take a moment to celebrate diversity in this church? <laughs> Is that okay? 
Can we just take a moment and celebrate the fact that God has given us a glimpse of heaven here at New Hope Church? I wonder if anybody's got a praise God in them this morning. I wonder if anybody's got a thank you Jesus for, for leadership that is intentional about building multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-generational churches, diverse as can be, but united together in the love of Christ. Can we celebrate that? Somebody shout, build it. So let me give you an application point. A friend of mine uh, served as a pastor in Michigan, and one of the core values that they would encourage their members to practice in order to build a strong church was this, to eat with others who are culturally different as we seek multicultural friendships. That's powerful, isn't it? Hey, church, if we are going to be the biblical example of the unified diversity that the Bible is speaking about, we need to be intentional about building multicultural friendships. Somebody say, build it. Hey, so I started off this message by saying that my prayer for you today is that what I have to say would spiritually help to get you in the very best shape of your life so that you can be a blessing to the Lord and to the body of Christ, all right? So, we're gonna do this. We're gonna burn it, and we're gonna build it. All right, now pray for me so I don't get a cramp while I'm doing this now. <laughs> I don't wanna get locked up on here. All right, so tell me, what do we need to burn in the church? I'll give you the first one. We need to burn the lie that our presence isn't needed in the church. All right, somebody say burn it. What else do we need to burn in the church? Come on, give me one, somebody. Come on, somebody give me one. All right, I've got one for you. Division. We need to burn division in the church. Does anybody have another one? Come on, somebody give me another one. Hopelessness. We need to burn hopelessness in the church. Somebody say burn it. All right, what else do we need to burn up? We need to burn up negativity in the church. Come on, somebody say, burn it. All right, so we've burned it, and now we're gonna build it. What do we need to build? We need to build up ourselves in the Lord so that we can build up one another, so that we can be a blessing to those who are outside of the church, all right? So let me tell you how to build it. Somebody shout, build it. All right, we wanna build ourselves up through prayer and through the study of the scripture. Come on, somebody shout, build it. Hey, what else do we wanna build ourselves up with? We wanna build ourselves up and others around us by fellowship with one another and by breaking bread with one another, especially those who do not look like us. Here's a challenge for you this week, this month, maybe even before the end of the year. Invite somebody over to your home to have a meal together who does not look like you. Somebody shout, build it. Build it. All right, let me give you another solid one right here. If you have never joined a life group here at New Hope Church, I wanna encourage you to join a life group today. Man, scan a QR code on the back of your chair, see a world changer, go out to the front, grab a hold of a campus pastor, tackle that brother. Make sure that you sign up for a life group today so that you can build yourself up. And here's another. If you have never joined a mid-sized group, I wanna encourage you to join a mid-sized group today. Registration's still open, but this is the last day to sign up for a mid-sized group so that, so that you can build up one another in the Lord. Just in case you're ever having a bad week or a bad month, has anybody ever had one of those before? <laughs> What you want to have in your life is somebody who has got your back so that when the pressures of life would try to come upon you and you feel like you can't, eh, no, not today. <laughs> 
I can't get this by myself, all right? But I bet if I had a good looking brother from my life group who had my back, I wonder would I be able to push this up off of my chest? And that's exactly what we need in the body of Christ. We need one another so that when the pressures of life would come upon us, we got people who can encourage us and who can push the weight up off of us and who can pray for us and who can be there for us. Somebody shout, build it. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the church because it was the brothers and sisters in Christ who taught me how to build my life. They taught me that I can be all that God says I can be and I can do all that God says I can do. I can have all that God says I can have. Hey, somebody shout, build it. So I started out this message by telling you about um, my guy, Mike, who actually won the Biggest Loser contest. And um, I remember when the contest was all said and done, he was looking good, he was lean. I remember my wife and I were moving our children back to New York from Florida because I had accepted a ministry position. And I had one of those in-town cars, you know, the kind you don't take out of town unless you get a bunch of work done to it. <laughs> So Mike owned his own shop and he fixed it for several hundred dollars. And when I went to pay him the bill, he told me, he said, hey, don't worry about it. I was like, what do you mean don't worry about it? He's like, you saved my life. I was like, what, what do you mean I saved your life? He was like, that training that you did? I was like, yeah, I was just volunteering. I didn't even really know what I was doing. He said, <laughs> I said, if anything, I thought I was getting on your nerves. You know, I'm trying to encourage you and push you. And he said, no, you'll never know the blessing that you were to me. And I wanted to say thank you. My wife wants us to say thank you and my children wanna say thank you. And I learned in that moment that sometimes just being there makes the difference. Sometimes just being there for somebody makes the difference. Hey church, we are God's plan A. There is no plan B. We, we, we are it, we, we, are the, we, we are the church, we are the living God, we, we are the ones that the Lord wants to use. Let's build up each other, let's build up ourselves that we might be a blessing to those who are outside the walls of this church because we have Christ Jesus who is the hope of the world. I wanna encourage you to stand and let's worship all across all of our campuses, across this New Hope movement. Hey, this is an unstoppable machine once you get it going, and so is the church. We are an unstoppable movement. Let's be the church. Let's lay politics aside. Let's lay differences aside. Let's build up one another. Let's love one another. Let's seek God today. Let's sing about the hope of the world. Come on, let's sing together. You keep hope alive.